That's the best southern accent I can do. Shit. And it's... Oh, shit. <laughs> Get out of my... You know, there are different variations in the southern accent. It's not just one standard one. I would, I would imagine. I think the one I'm basing my <laughs> shit on is actually Gabriel Knight. It's actually Tim okay. Curry's awful, awful accent when he yeah, is in the snake knew. mound going, Oh, shit. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> this sounds like Grandpa Simpson. Oh, no. <laughs> His, he says it takes him as long to say oh shit as it does Virginia Capers, I think. <laughs> yeah. Again, Stuart M. Rosen fucking dropping the ball. Uh, Sorry, uh, Stuart. <laughs> s- smoke less pot, please. Oh, well. Um, hi, I'm the Space Quest historian. Oh, wait, where's the video? <laughs> wait, did... We, oh, it's uh, it, it's added to the playlist. We'll oh, okay. start, do I have to, start it. Do I have to click on it? Or oh, no, no, no. Gonna... I'm okay. uh, I'm in the driver's seat. All you have to do is sit okay. there and be beautiful. Okay. <laughs> you you just pulled. I I can't see, but I'm sure you just pulled a face. I did. Yes. I <laughs> I can't wait to see this in editing. <laughs> um, I'm just I'm just gonna start that again. Okay. Hi, I'm the Space Quest historian, and uh, it's been a frightfully eventful week. We're all. Uh, giddy up and uh, all raring to go to play more Gabriel Knight One. Actually, watch someone play Gabriel Knight One. I'm still here with my pal Francisco Gonzalez. How are you doing again? I'm great. Another yeah. week, another episode. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I that intro was slightly better than the two previous ones, I feel. Okay. Well get- we we oh, <laughs> well, it'll only get better. That's that's the best part. The next week will be even more epic. Maybe by the time we finish this we'll have a good intro. Yeah, that that'll be awesome. And I just <laughs> I just like I was I was just sitting there like my on my own lonesome expecting a little pat on the shoulder. Go, you're doing great, you're doing I was just like, Oh, um, sure, why not? Yeah. That was that was good. I, guess. I tell it like it is. Yeah. Straight shooting Gonzalez. <laughs> um Okay. <laughs> Also, there's a nice little sheen of sweat building up on my forehead. I've noticed uh, that that yeah. that in no way that's just just it's just because it's been a hot week. Usually. Yeah, it's been a it's been a hot week, and and for the uh, third week in a row, we're wearing the same clothes. It's yes. it's actually getting a little disgusting. It is um, it is a little disgusting. I've done my laundry, but it just is it's only so much I can do. Yeah, and because uh, we're doing it for uh, Mister Knight, Mister Gabriel Knight. That's right. He, uh, yeah. What a character. Let's, uh, a character. let's jump back into his life. How the hell do I do this? There you let's. go. And it should actually play at some point. There you go. Okay. Uh, yes, we are now on day two. That didn't take for fucking ever, did it? <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> a mask I wore as I approached. I was what I am now. And though the pattern was unclear, its meaning could be bought. Uh... Could it? I, the, the, the poem here, which is revealed, spoiler, at the end of day 10 to be Gabriel Knight just, you know, having a four Good in the clock morning. in the morning writing Don't wank uh, well, about his past experience, um, oh. is, I think, was we actually written by Josh Mandel. Fresh pot on the table. Oh, really? I think okay. so. Josh Mandel did a lot of, as he did on any Sierra game you could mention, uh, did a lot of uncredited writing, sure. mostly of the extraneous uh, bits, but I think like he's, he told me once that, don't hold like me to this, I think he told me once that he did the uh, uh, poet, poetry uh, shit uh, at the okay. beginning. Not his best work, I feel. I mean, he's a good writer, but I think mo- a lot of the uh, uh, humor, humorous descriptions that, uh, uh, you know, you see uh, in some of the more horrible parts of, like, when you, again, spoiler, go into the morgue room underground. Let's not spoil too much, but there are a lot of really creepy de- uh, descriptions in that room. Right. Uh, and then they just smack of Josh Mandel. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, because Gabriel was just mentioning about it was a leopard, not a lion. Did you ask Mosley about the crime scene in the previous video? Uh, we might have glossed over some of that. I did cut out a bit of, you know, just me asking them about random shit. Because uh, one of his, one of Stuart Rosen's finest uh, directions, I guess, and my favorite line in this game, as performed by Tim Curry, is when you ask uh, Mosley about the crime scene, and he mentions the things that were found, and he's like, yeah, we found fur, it's leopard fur, and Gabriel goes, leopard fur? <laughs> yeah, that was in the last, uh, the previous episode, actually, yeah. Oh, okay. Because well. the whole, 
that's, uh, cause that ties into the opening uh, scene where you see uh, yes. the woman transforming into a leopard. And but he says it all in one word, so it's like L E P U F U H. Lepofor! So let's take a moment to appreciate the Lepofor. <laughs> yeah, it's a three o'clock in the morning session there for Mr. Curry. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Can I go home That's now? That's inhuman. <laughs> <laughs> You're only supposed to let voice actors work for like two hours. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it started out being four, and then they had to cut it down to two. Yeah. Uh, something. I think they're still on strike. Uh, hmm. It was used uh, and here's some oh. more world building from uh, Miss Capers. Yes. Uh, and they actually do, I mean, sometimes this game just smacks of Jane Jensen going to the library oh, and yeah. just copying details down in in-game dialogue. We will well. get to Dr. John and his massive oh, yeah. lecture Another later. info dump, yeah. Yeah. But again, like, yeah, it makes the world rich and you don't really have to listen to it all if you don't want to. No. The, oh, wait, there was actually something that we teased at the end of episode one and didn't get to oh, in yes. episode two was right. uh, with regards to info dumps. Uh, as a game designer, as a yes. well-respected and published game designer... Well, uh, a, the two are not a, necessarily... Uh, go hand, they don't necessarily have to go hand in hand, but okay. But they do in your case. <laughs> oh, <And> thank you. <laughs> uh, how would you have managed uh, stuff like Grandma's info dump and Dr. John's info dump? Uh, Ugh, so that it wasn't just... That is just an excellent question. Because, as I mentioned, I'm currently making a game called Lamplight City. Not the Lamplight not Shadow. Not, not, lamp, not Lamplight Shadow City Mystery Fuckfuck, as you call it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that should be um, the uh, alt like that, the uh, complete title, like uh, the eleventh hour, a sequel to the seventh guest. Like, yes, you're right. Lamplight City Shadow Fuck Fuck. Yeah. So one of the biggest design challenges I've found in that game, because I don't have inventory and therefore no inventory puzzles, it focuses exclusively on like detective mechanics, which basically mm -hmm. mean talking to people and asking them questions and investigating things and yeah. you know looking for stuff. It's not a um, hidden object game. Don't yeah. worry, kids. No, it's not a hidden object yeah. game. But that that is one big design like challenge, is conveying again. information in an interesting I'm way sorry. that's not just Putting exclusively like reading it in books business. or I cannot, mm, people cannot. telling you stuff. Like that whole thing of discovery is, is what makes I it fun. But, I mean... Really? Please tell the me thing, the nature of your business. Like I mentioned in episode one, the thing with the grandma info dump that's weird is the fact that that it's something that Gabriel yeah, should ostensibly be. know since it's yeah, his family. Like, like you know, I problem. I don't recall, like, you know, my just grandparents would tell me stories, but it wasn't day. like one day so. I was just like, hey, tell me about my mother, and then... At length. You know, at length, yeah. So, I don't know, that's, that's a really good question. I don't know in the context of this game how to best do it. Like, I'm thinking Through about discovery. what Phoenix did. It, that, That's what I would get yeah, at. Through I discovery. Mean, I guess... I guess one more interesting way of doing it would be... Because, I mean, the pretense that Gabriel goes to the house is... You know, he... Is it pretense or is it pretext as an excuse? Uh, I mean, pretext is the excuse. Um, a pretext, I would... Yeah. I don't know. Hashtag second language. The reason... The reason that Gabriel goes to her house, the reason she asks him to go to the house, is to go through his father's things. So, like... You know, and he when doesn't. You talk, he doesn't. He goes and he finds the sketchbook and he solves the clock puzzle. But like, if he were to go to into the attic and go through his father's things, maybe he could find something yeah. more interesting to then ask her about, and then yeah. that leads into the more information gathering. Yeah, exactly. Stuff. Or like, like, it's like going her... through the attic. Like she comes up to the attic with him, and they go through all this shit together, and what you right. find Daddy, is something that she can then comment on. on the yeah, exactly. Instead of just being like randomly, "Hey, tell me about my mom." Are you? Oh, yeah. okay. Well, your mother was this yeah. and this, like telling In him stuff that he should already. 1947. Know. She moved to. Oh yeah. Right. Like oh. he could find a. He I could, you know, maybe find a picture of you her mom or of his mom when right. she was young, and be like, "Oh yeah, look, this was back when she did this," and How like give him the same some information, some just framed slightly oh. differently. Yeah. You a little more, uh, um, a little more interestingly. Oh, this is a photo from the crash site when your parents <laughs> die. <laughs> Why would you keep the fucking mo uh, Cause mortician Because I'm a sick picture. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Just like your Why friend Mosley says. Why is it covered in in candle wax and uh, why is it yeah. faded around the edge? Don't ask. Right. Also, is this chalk on the floor? I said, don't yeah. ask. 
Yeah. And I mean, maybe the same thing could apply for Dr. John. Like, instead of him just telling you stuff, maybe Don't he could comment on the... You could have actually have to look at the museum displays and get close-ups of them and, like, he, yeah. could, he could tell, explain them to you. Like, he can tell you about Marie Laveau by you looking at the portrait of Marie Laveau or something like that. Which you know? I don't do. Uh, probably should have just borrow this bag. But yeah, yeah. um... Oh, and in here, just, just to, like, change the subject for no reason whatsoever, um... Sure. This part is actually, you know, for the for a game that is about voodoo rituals and supernatural powers and a, a little necklace that can somehow ward off evil, this is the part I find the most incredulous. Is that this dude in a fucking trench coat can just walk into a detective's office, steal the badge from him, he doesn't notice, first of all, that it's not on his jacket. Like, you yeah. would imagine you coming into your uh, your room, your office, and just going, Okay, what is missing? My fucking badge that was on my jacket in plain sight. And he just takes off and impersonates uh, um, a police officer, which I understand is a felony. Yes. Uh, and the only, th the only re repercussion that comes from this is uh, one of Mark, Mark Hamill's best delivered lines, Give me back my badge. Now, knight! That is it. No repercussion otherwise. Well, do you do you try going back and manually like giving the badge back to Mosley afterwards? Nah, I I no. I just wait because I, I figure that's in keeping with Gabriel Knight's character. Just wait until he asks for it. Cause right. cause fuck him. Well, I think the game's justification for this is that they're friends, so Gabriel can maybe get away with it a little bit more. Like maybe Mosley isn't paying any attention. And the other thing is like Malia. Yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. I just think it's really undetective like of a person who actually made really? detective. You'd well, think yeah, he'd have some talent. But it's an adventure game, so oh. adventure games. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna go with that. Anyway, your your second I am gonna point. Go with that. Oh the second thing was <laughs> like you said, yeah, the repercussions like Malia like this way. figures out that he's not really a cop and says, Oh, you know, if I wasn't like he gives himself away by flirting with her and she's like, Oh well if I wasn't flattered, maybe I I'd you know, I'd call the real police. So I guess you could argue that like you know, the the whole like, oh they're they're star crossed lovers, they're fated because of their ancestry or whatever. Um, mm. so she goes easy on him or whatever. So but but yeah, ultimately there are really no real repercussions for stealing a badge so yeah i mean i don't know how you'd you know it is i just tried flirting with her by there. pushing her oh okay <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry yeah well i just, I just wanted boobs. to get that in there that is one of those it, it operates on adventure game logic really yeah a bit a bit a, um and we were talking, uh, skirting around the issue, I think, uh, at some point, of uh, there might be some sexist undertones, or it might be uh, all ironic. And uh, I, I, like you said, I don't, I don't want to get into the full-on discussion or anything, but uh, this scene in particular is one of those that kind of, I think maybe were accept more acceptable in 1993 when you had like like dumb cop movies and uh, you know the girl was just someone they met uh, like for 10 minutes and all of a sudden they're completely infatuated with each other it kind of well, operates on 90s logic the scene does yeah although again going back to the thing um it, I think you know they get away with it like, with the excuse of that of like I quite their, abhor them. there's like yeah. some sort of instinct there you Have know you like some it? sort of uh, underlying no, I'm afraid uh, I help not supernatural but like you know because she's descended from Tedalo and Tell Gabriel's descended yourself. from Gunther they have like this sort yeah. of like genetic really attraction to each what other you know, and um, that was actually in the cutscene at the crime scene when they were right. looking at each other her eyes widen it's like what the fuck am I looking at right Right, like, who is this scruffy man who obviously hasn't changed his clothes in however many days? And why is he wearing a trench coat in the middle of June? What's wrong with him? Yeah. Um, why does she have a roaring fire in the middle of the day? But yeah, anyway. that's true. Well, atmosphere. <laughs> but that's very true. I never thought about that. Why does she have a roaring fire in the middle of the day? Uh, well, right back at you. I never, I never really made that. You know, of course they have a connection because they have that this uh, not supernatural, but kind of like instinctual connection with each other. Right. Um, it explains why you know after Gabriel basically assaults her in the cemetery, she shows up and she's like, "Oh, I'm. I can't explain why I showed up. You know, yeah. whatever." Well, it just I mean, fucking kiss me already. Yeah, it's pretty weak, obviously. But I mean, Malia is. 
I'm very she is written as a fairly women in my family strong, to, not to use the cliche, strong woman. Never she just yeah. said, I'm very independent no. detective. And I you know, know. she is. What about you? And she is. She yes. definitely is. She, she is, is a well-written character, Sunday. and yes. she is, like, she actually is a character. What she's interesting, even though you don't see much of her. Like, she's interesting because she has that conflict I between, do appreciate the arts. you know, she, Opera, she feels ballet, obligated to her family, but she's also you look around, you'll see trapped like by African this. For example. Ancient yeah, uh, supernatural it thing. It is um, detective. It means a but yeah, um, I guess I guess I, the I lost my train of thought there. No, nah, but I, I guess the only the, the thing I really wanted to get to was how piss poor Gabriel's flirting skills really are. Because oh the, yeah, he's terrible. The, the line that he that he throws at. Well, first of all, he starts asking her all these questions like, "What are your hobbies? How often do you come here? This is my living room. You fuck. What are you doing?" Um, and and then he goes, "Your eyes are really quiet." And that that whole fucking block of text is just so cringy. And then, not only that, but the delivery where Tim Curry's just like, Oh, fuck, a bottle that, I'll make a fortune, oh, blah, blah, blah. It's like, come on, don't yeah. do that. Oh, uh, I, I, was, I was really hoping that was the one I was going to click on right then and there so we could take it in and enjoy it. Um, it is, uh, for some reason, his... Oh, is it now? Nah, damn it. Um, Tim Curry's way of being swathed with the ladies is to get right up to the microphone and draw his breath in with his teeth. It's true. Oh, here we go, here we go. Yeah. Are really distracting. I don't think I've ever seen a color quite like that. Brown gold. Sorry, I can't hear you over the music! <laughs> a, I, I was fucking... lip-syncing. I was attempting to lip-sync along. Sorry, sorry. No, that's fine. Broke that that's one up. Oh, that's another thing. The portraits are lip-synced in this game, which is another... Yes. Another big effort. Never knows yeah, life. and this was one of the uh, first. I think it was the first Sierra game that did that, and it's uh, uh, King's Quest Six, I believe, did it. Oh, okay. Um, As did King's Quest Five, the CD version, but I don't know if those came out before. Uh, oh wait, so what am I saying? Space Quest Four CD version, which came out in '92, yes. did it as well. Yes. Um, so yeah, Sierra was pretty good about lip syncing. Yeah, and this is uh, this is automated lip syncing. They ran it through some proprietary software, and yeah. I actually I had a conversation with Al Lowe at one point, which uh, for for my podcast, which did not record. It's one of the lowest points of my podcasting careers. No um, pun intended. Yeah. And it's a, in a career that's full of low points. This was really bad. This um, is the owl low point. Well, <laughs> oh, this is why I love you. Um, but he was talking about how I don't when like really why most people hate me, actually. Okay, okay, oh, you're right. Well, look, I really just wanted to see you. We're going to make good friends, then. You can be um, mad at me if you want, but I swear. Uh, Sierra had, when, when Sierra got bought out by, like you know, this whole Madoff Mr. scandal Knight, and uh, <laughs> the one company after another started, uh, you know, buying them up. Um, right. They actually destroyed a lot of the proprietary really technology that Sierra had developed, and they had some really, really cool technology going for them. One of them was this uh, lip syncing technology, which yeah, I think I, it was called Bright Star. Yeah, and it was like it was like uh, I wasn't I don't want to say decades, but it was years ahead of its time. You could mm. you could shove a waveform in its face, and it would just make the uh, lips uh, sync up to the waveform. Mm. However, the fuck it did that. This is before yeah. voice recognition was ever a thing. Right. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. I wish we had something like... I mean, there's sort of stuff like that Thank now with... Um, I, don't know. I forget what it's called. Rhubarb, I believe. Oh, wait, hey! Ah, oh, that was close. Sorry. I was the ah oh, shit line. Uh, oh, I like... Well, I like the... I had a lovely time. <laughs> Sorry, I keep interrupting. Go ahead. No, it's fine. I was just talking about boring lip sync technology. Um, that's not boring. No, there's a, there's a program now called Rhubarb, which I believe does something similar you just give it the waveform and it automatically does it i think thimbleweed park used it um yeah but i have yet to experiment with it no. i think it's I've used pamela oh okay. it just supports it uh, actually someone just wrote a module that supported uh pamela as well as rhubarb and something else but i haven't played around with it yet because i'm i am crazy but i'm not crazy yet so <laughs> Not, will, not crazy enough like to have your uh, uh, character portraits in Lamplight, Shadow City, uh, Lip Sync. Oh no, I'm planning on doing that. I just haven't thought about it yet because I that's one that comes later in the process. Oh, oh sure, yeah. Tell me something about. I think uh, it's important. I think it's important to, you know, like there's been a lot of uh, debate 
on whether or not character portraits nowadays should be animated. Yeah, um, it's actually interesting. Your previous game, Shardlight, and a lot of the yeah. Wajidai games, actually, they the character portraits are just still images. And yeah, and I'm I in the camp where that that's kind of takes me out of immersion. It's just that, like two people communicating telepathically at each other. Yeah, I feel the same way, and I know that like an argument has been put forth that like with higher detailed portraits, it's actually harder to animate them. But I found that that's not necessarily true. Um, but I think I think in cases like those where the portraits are being displayed over the backgrounds and over the the sprites and stuff and like other stuff's happening on screen like if the portraits appeared right oh look he teleported again yeah he did. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I right clicked right if uh, if the character portraits were appearing over the screen as they did in my previous games I think that it you can get away with having them not move their lips but if yeah. the, if the screen is black and, and the only thing on the screen are the two portraits the then I think that you have to have their lips move at the very yeah. least, because otherwise it's just going to look really, really weird. Um, I agree. Nice. And I mean, yeah. I've I've done lip syncing in my previous Thanks. games, and it's, really it's tedious. Well, but I'm an architectural and, student. And you know, actually. some people might argue that practice. people don't even notice if it's not there, but people notice if it's there. And yeah, and they I notice if it goes out of sync. Hi, Space yes. Quest Four. You can do these patterns. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it is I'm definitely busy, tedious, and, and it's a lot of work. But in quest. my opinion. Oh. Okay. It's worth it. I would say it's worth my, it. That's just my crazy opinion. There's, there's a. I, I didn't know. Uh, you, you're saying that people will notice it if it's Come missing. Back here. Uh, hey. There's once in, in in Simpleweed Park. Mm -hmm. I did not realize that there was lip syncing in that game until I read a blog post by Ron Gilbert about how they used like the power yeah. plugin. I was like, the sprites are so yeah. fucking tiny. The I mouth realized, is like one pixel wide. Yeah, I, I realized that there was lip syncing, but it, but like you say, like the sprites are the mouths on the sprites are so small that it's not really you can't really tell. Like in that case, I don't think you would need lip syncing. Nah. But if if you saw if you had big portraits, then yeah. Yeah, big portraits. If you're if you're doing the Gabriel Knight uh, on screen, like uh, the screen turns well. black and you got the two dudes uh, mm -hmm. on screen talking, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, like, Quest for Glory 4 had those big, entire screen portraits, uh, but yeah. they didn't have lip syncing. And I thought that was kind of... Like, playing it recently, I was like, oh, that's kind of weird that they didn't do that. But Especially since they did it with so many of their other games. Yeah. And, I, and they have, like, a lot of... They have a lot of mouth frames. Like, they could have totally done it, but... Maybe they yeah, just that's that's really weird. If you're doing the mouth flappy thing, like when it just has, has random uh, mouth movements, and you've got a big close-up on-screen portrait, that's mm. that's when it really starts getting weird and freaky. It's like watching a dubbed uh, cartoon. Um, yeah. And uh, 90s uh, cartoons dubbed in Danish, like the Disney cartoons we mentioned previously, <laughs> it looks really funky. Yeah. So yeah. You could take this. Oh, the lucky dog guy. Hmm. I'm the lucky dog guy. Yeah, he does. He does sound like a, like someone just sat in the vocal booth and pinched his nose and just went lucky <laughs> dog for a twenty dollar gift certificate. That's not even an accent, you idiot. Yes, it no, is. Not. I'm a walk on roll. You know, I've, you I've like a lucky dog, I'm you? surprised that they actually managed to. I guess lucky dog isn't really a trademark, but they actually do have these lucky dog vans and vendors in New Orleans. Really. Because later yeah. on you pick up an American's repressed card instead of yeah, an American yeah. Express card. Exactly. So somehow they got away with using Lucky Dog, but not American Express. It's just because a dog is just inherently and lucky, and they the could just claim that yes. it's just... They could just spell it with a lowercase d, and they'd be fine. Good. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, no, me neither. Um, uh, and this, uh, you know, bribing children to do your evil bidding yeah. in adventure <laughs> games is never commented upon. Well, it's not evil. He's just asking him to get a. He gone. is asking him to bend down. Oh, that's uh, no. <laughs> not Don't going there. Go there. No, no okay. let's not Never go mind. there. Never mind. All he got was a piece of paper. Yeah. Also, incidentally, the real Jackson Square, I believe. Let me see. Is square pictures. instead of circular. No, no, it's circular. But I believe that the statue of Andrew you, Jackson is not actually surrounded by a How'd fence like that. Or maybe it is. Squeeze, but I, I forget. Maybe it was in 1993, and then all of a sudden, everyone who, uh, all the street performers <laughs> in the park started climbing the fence, and uh, yeah. the just had to take it down no. because this game was so immensely popular. <laughs> 
I'm pretty sure that I've read that they didn't actually go, like, they got pictures hey, of New Orleans, but they didn't actually go to New Orleans. What do you need no. for this? Is Maybe they did, I don't know. I think Jane probably went. From these Maybe. Oh, uh, yeah, there is. Uh, okay, never mind, there is. I was wrong. Probably circular. I think in, in Gabriel Knight 2, they actually flew the uh, development from, down anyway? to Munich in you Germany and had them walk me. around and mm. take pictures okay. and yeah. then go go home and utterly destroy them in Photoshop or whatever. I actually have I actually have a book, a player's strategy guide making of a uh, book of the beast within that I've never read that actually has interviews <laughs> with the production team and I've been meaning to do that because I I was flipping I through it and I saw that there patterns. was one with like the art director really? and they're like so you took pictures yeah. huh yeah, and he's like great. yeah we did because that's what now. he sounds like I'll get yeah. it my in my shot. mind <laughs> I'll tell you what I come up with tomorrow uh, does it does it say how uh, how much uh, pot he smoked when he decided to go in with I the biggest know. fucking filter brush in the world and just I'll, destroy I'll all these photographs I'll have to look and tell you. Um, anyway, that's the uh, second game, and uh, we've we've still yes. got we're on episode Welcome, three, my yes. and uh, there are eleven episodes in this place. Oh, oh, it's the wood, it's the voodoo museum. Ah, yes. So can I let me comment on the art in this game because I haven't yet. Please, right? please. I really, really like the framing in this background. Like one of the things that Gabriel Knight does really well that I also appropriated for my own purposes. And Richard Cobbett wrote a great article about this. Um, music is so loud in this location. But you know what? I'll down. talk about this in the next episode because we are going to run out of time very quickly. Very I, that would be correct, yes. The info dump is coming up in episode four. I do promise, yeah. for people who know the game, Episode 4 is not just Dr. John and his info dump. Other shit happens in episode 4, so... Well, we'll talk about we'll talk about art and stuff in episode 4, yeah. so... Yeah, let's we'll, do that. It'll relieve the tension of, uh, of Dr. John's info dump. Yeah, because uh, there's a lot of interesting framing going on in this game. There's a lot of foreground imagery. Uh, it still kind of is the same... Uh, classic adventure game, uh, like uh, everything is seen from the side, mm -hmm. but they're starting to they're starting to experiment with uh, um, angles and shit. So yeah, I'm looking are. forward to, looking forward to that. Me too. It's a shame we have to wait a week for it. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I hope, well. hope you can remember all of that for uh, for next week. <laughs> I hope. So. I'm sure I will. I'll 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 make a note of it and then just <laughs> remember it for next time. Also, Good. my hair is funky. Yeah. You have an excellent memory. Uh, mm. Much better than mine. So, uh, for you people out there, please like, subscribe, do whatever you kids do, but do leave us a comment because we do really enjoy the comments. And if you want to see more about Francisco's Lamp Shadow Light City <laughs> game, you can uh, go to uh, his website at GrundislavGames.com or you can just hit the dude up at Grundislav Games on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's one of those very nice people who actually reads his uh, Twitter mentions and occasionally replies. He... Replies to me, anyway. I don't know why. I always reply. Unless always. you're like, You suck! <laughs> Have you ever actually gotten one of those? Mm, not in I, those words. <laughs> no, I can't imagine anyone telling you you suck. That's sacrilege, eh, almost. You clearly... No, never mind. I'll wait till we're <laughs> off camera. <laughs> yes, more shit talking off camera. <laughs> Hooray! Humans. So, I will see you lovely people out there around the Chrono Stream.